الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to today's program in which we are continuing our series in which we are exploring the various ways we can help integrate different groups of people into the Muslim community to help make sure that everyone has an equal opportunity to help strengthen the Muslim community and contribute to the Muslim community, as well as we all have the chance to grow individually with respect to our religion and our spirituality. Today, we are going to be exploring a very big issue, an issue that gets a lot of attention and a lot of discussion. But at the same time, it's an issue which is sometimes controversial. People feel very emotional about it. It can lead to great debates. And yet it is an issue that does need to be discussed. And that is the question of inclusion of women at the mosque or at the Islamic center. And in particular, I'm talking about countries where Muslims are a minority because I know the dynamics of this sometimes work out a bit differently in majority Muslim countries, albeit many people nowadays are bringing up the same issues. Uh, but in particular, uh, in a place where the mosque or the Hosseiniya or Islamic center is really the only place where one might have an Islamic environment, it's generally agreed that it is crucial for both men and women to be able to participate and to benefit from it. And yet, we do know that in many areas, uh, in the West in particular, I wouldn't say everywhere, but in many areas, women's inclusion at the mosque is a genuine problem uh, to the degree that sometimes women do get disillusioned and they stop going or even stop paying attention to religion at all because they haven't had a positive experience, uh, which of course is not good. Uh, and we do know that this issue got a lot of attention lately because of the new women's mosque in California, which of course is uh, fine. I mean, there have been women's mosques in China for quite a long time. Uh, but I think the issue is not so much that it was formed, but rather what issues led to its formation. What issues led some women to break off from uh, Islamic centers for males and females and say, sorry, this isn't working for us. And most importantly, how can we change those issues? How can we make the mosque more inclusive for both males and females. Inshallah, I do hope that some of these ideas will be taken on board. I am not the only one saying them, so uh, there are many people saying these things worldwide, uh, both in the Shi'i and Sunni communities. Uh, and I hope, inshallah, in this decade we'll be able to actually resolve more of these issues so that we'll not continue having uh, the same discussions because some of these issues are really quite long-standing. So what are some of the issues? Uh, one of the effects of having, uh, typically having gender segregated worship is men genuinely may not know what experiences women have. Women also may not know what experiences men have because we only see our own experience. Hearing about it secondhand is not seeing it. So I don't think there's some sort of plot to try to make women feel uh, marginalized in Islamic centers. However, I, I think there's simply because it isn't experienced uh, in particular by men, they don't understand some of the things that women have to deal with. Uh, and so one of the basic ways that one can begin to understand these things is, is simply to uh, literally have a look at the situation other people are in. Uh, one of the issues that many women face is the issue of space for prayer or listening for lectures and participation at the mosque. And now, Basically, we've got three models of Islamic centers, mosques, prayer halls, and so forth. Uh, you have the one where men and women are in the same room, right? So there, there's, there may be a partition or no partition, but you have everyone in the same space. Uh, and in that setup, especially if there's no partition, like was done at the prophetic mosque, some of these issues don't come up, like seeing the speaker. That's not generally an issue, or hearing the speaker. Uh, then we have the setup where you have men and women in separate rooms uh, and the speaker generally on the men's side. Uh, this sometimes um, leads to some issues that need addressing. One of the most basic issues that comes up is the size and quality of the space. 
Uh, I remember once um, I had a look at the man's side of the mosque. This is not during worship hours. I didn't go in there with all the brothers praying, but I had a reason to go over there. And so I went from the women's side, which I was used to, and I looked at the man's side, and I was completely astonished. It was so beautiful. It was clean. It was big. There were chandeliers and calligraphy and, you know, decorations. It was a very nice space. It looked like a very nice reception room in someone's home. And then I went back to the women's space. It was small. It was a bit darker. We didn't have decorations on the walls. We didn't have these nice chandeliers. And this sent me a message. It said, well, wait a minute. These spaces are not equal. Uh, and the good stuff is going for the other side. And our space was also smaller. This is despite the fact that many women do have their children with them. So you've got women, you've got children, and you've got people in a smaller space. Now, as I was saying before, I don't think there is a great plot to do this. I don't even think most people are aware of it. I'm sure most men at the mosque mentally assume that women's space is similar to theirs. It might not occur to them that the women might have a significantly smaller space, which is not enough for everyone, especially if you have toddlers running around. It may be physically uncomfortable. Uh, it may be, for example, hotter. Uh, you may not be able to hear properly and so forth. Uh, they may not necessarily know that the amount of care that's taken for decorating the man's side, which is usually the public side, is not always there on the woman's side. Uh, but these sorts of issues do send a subconscious message in places where they are issues uh, that women are not included. These things can be fixed. Alhamdulillah, we have money in our community. Uh, and we have very talented people and artistic people, um, architectural people, who can fix these situations. Uh, and so uh, one thing you can actually do is, for example, if you're uh, a man in the community, is during the off hours again, so I'm not saying you invade the women's side when they're there, but during the off hours, get permission and go see what the women's space looks like. Uh, it may be very nice. Some communities <coughs> do a good job. I won't name names, but some communities do a good job in making nice prayer space for sisters and brothers. And some communities need some improvement. See how the situation is. And if it does seem to suggest that there's an inequity between the facilities for males and females, uh, then uh, consider proposing some changes uh, or working for some changes in the community so that everyone feels equally included. There is something else that doesn't always get brought up enough. Uh, but I think it's, an important, it's important for us to start thinking about these things. And that is, sometimes there is the issue of physical accessibility. And that is to say, a very common setup for these buildings is to have the brothers on the first floor and then the sisters on the second floor uh, for various reasons. However, this may not work for elderly women who have difficulty climbing stairs. It may not work for women in wheelchairs. Uh, or who have problems walking, uh, women who are very um, close to uh, delivering children may have issues with this sort of setup as well. Uh, so just as, inshallah, it's good to make sure that the actual space available to men and women is equitable. Also, it's important to make sure the accessibility is there too, and that uh, people with disabilities are not being uh, left out um, simply because their space is not accessible to them. Another very basic issue that comes up uh, with respect to women being included at, at the mosque, and this is in particular in cases where you have men and women in separate rooms, is sometimes we can't hear. And the reason why we can't hear is that, mashallah, alhamdulillah, we have so many good technological things nowadays. They sometimes put up TV screens and speakers and so forth, but sometimes they don't work. Uh, and if you go to all the effort to go to a majlis, for example, there's a big crowd, and then the speaker stops working on the women's side, there's really nothing to do for the next two or three hours but sit and chat amongst yourselves. So these things also need to be taken care of. Uh, if there is a group of people who physically cannot hear the speaker, you need to make sure that you do have very quality uh, facilities available so that everyone has equal access to hearing uh, what is going on. And nowadays, uh, it's quite common to use TV screens as well. So to make sure that is working, it's not pointing at the ceiling or something, uh, and the sound level is appropriate. These are really some basic things. 
Uh, but uh, nonetheless, they do make a very big difference in people's experiences and feeling, feeling welcome, uh, feeling like they are part of the community. There's one other issue that in general is a women's issue. Not always a women's issue, but in general a women's issue. And that is very frequently when a family goes to the Islamic Center, the children are oftentimes with the woman. That means that you might have all the women together in one room, and if, say, half of the women have four-year-olds, five-year-olds, six-month-year-olds, and so forth, you're going to have these kids naturally making a fair amount of noise because they're kids, and the two-year-old doesn't know that they're not supposed to throw a tantrum in the middle of the medjulis and so forth. What can you do? You don't want to tell the people not to come, right? Because they deserve the opportunity to come and participate uh, in the religious community, uh, especially someone who's at home all day with children. Uh, it's good for the children to be there too. It's good for them to be in that kind of environment, even if uh, they're not old enough necessarily to understand everything that's going on. I still think it's very important to bring them. And these are areas, and again, this is fairly basic, but it is lacking in, in many places. Uh, that's why I'm mentioning it, where it is important to give facilities. And I do have to say that, again, some communities excel. So let's look at some of these models. Now, again, I'm not going to name names, but there is one mosque in London I'm thinking of that I think truly excels at providing facilities to take care of the fact that there's going to be children. Uh, and if you just put the children on the women's side, a lot of times no one is going to be able to hear because the children are noisy. So this place, it has a room for adult men, it has a room for adult women, it has a room for women, uh, which has a, again, a good sound system, so you can hear everything uh, if you want to, uh, who have infants and otherwise noisy, noisy little beings. And it also has dedicated classes for children too. So that uh, rather than just sort of zoning out or playing mobile phone games during the lectures and majalis, the kids are actually taught a structured curriculum uh, by teachers who are qualified. And by that, I don't necessarily mean they have to have a teaching degree, but it's not just taking someone and saying, you're going to be our volunteer today to do kids' classes, but rather there is a plan, there is a structure. So therefore, the kids are excited about going, and they are productively and actively engaged in their religious education. Uh, while well, the parents get a bit of a break and can listen to the program or the medjlis and so forth. Uh, and also there are facilities for women who have children. This solves the problem. It solves many problems, actually. Um, that way, for example, uh, the person without children is not going to suffer uh, from the noise situation, uh, but it accommodates people who have kids too. Again, may I emphasize, these things are really very basic and straightforward. Uh, but there are areas where in some places we do need to grow in order to help uh, be a bit more inclusive in the community and serve the needs of the different people. Uh, these sorts of things, I do believe they'll really make a difference in people's lives, uh, in particular the lives of uh, children and young people uh, and also women, but in general the whole community as well. So thank you for joining us today. Inshallah, we'll be looking at some more angles of these issues in the future programs. Uh, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.